Hello everyone, welcome to Looking for Legends, where we find the people who are working on solutions and problems. I'm Dan, this is Sarah, and we're sitting down with Tim from Take 3. So I guess just quickly, Take 3 is an organisation which encourages people to go out and pick up rubbish wherever they are in the world. Um, and they've had a lot of success. Can you tell us a bit about the journey, how, uh, how we got here? Yeah, so there was three people that came together, and being a surfer, I'd seen huge problems around the world surfing and traveling with uh, waste and pollution. We all came together in 2009 with our um, unique backgrounds and, sure. and we launched it. And so it's take three for the sea, just take a few bits of rubbish with you when you leave a beach or a park or when you're walking down the street. And we use it as a way of bringing people together to collectively solve this enormous problem of plastic pollution. Right. So you literally encourage, I mean, telling people to go and pick out rubbish. Yeah, it's all about positioning, right? You just gotta make it fun, make it simple, and, and show others doing it. I think that's what we're really showing is that people uh, will do this action when they are inspired by others. Sure. So speaking about being inspired by others, you started this local community and it's gone global. Did you ever anticipate that this would happen once you started taking free from the sea? Look, I think we, we recognised the problem was so big that we needed um, to do something. And we didn't quite know how Take 3 would get there, but as soon as we recognised that people were adopting it, like, hmm, I wonder where this can go. We're onto a thing. Yeah, we're onto a thing. So where has it got? You're, you're international now? Yeah, well, we found that Take 3 for the Sea hashtag has been used in 129 countries, just on Instagram Thank alone, with over 53,000 times. Uh, and if we can extrapolate out um, how much is being pulled out from the environment. It's about two and a half million pieces of rubbish uh, every year, and it's about 16,000 hours of people's volunteering effort. Oh, it's really Pretty <laughs> cool. There's such, a, there's such a big pool of resources out there, I guess, that you can just draw on like that, like all those two hands. So I guess that leads us to another important part of the, the whole piece, which is empowerment. And when people look at the problem of plastic pollution, it's, it seems so big and intractable and intimidating and overwhelming. Have you found that there is power in encouraging people to just use their own two hands to make, even if it is just this tiny bit, does that make a difference psychologically to them, do you think? Yeah, I like to look at uh, Take 3 as being a bit of a, a Trojan horse because once you've got people's attention, it infiltrates your life and suddenly you become an advocate. You talk about it with your co-workers or with mm. your parents or with your friends. And so in doing so, I think we're creating a new opportunity. It's not just us, obviously. We're one of many organisations that advocate a similar message, but it gives people that platform, I think, to do much more. So can you tell us any interesting stories beyond taking free from the sea, how you've managed to change people's lives and sort of, I guess, infiltrate their brains and um, change their trajectory what they're doing in their life? Yeah, good question. So we just did some analysis recently where we encouraged our community to tell us those stories. Like, what have you done as a result of following our movement? So we got hundreds of responses in. The guy who was a small business owner who used to use polystyrene boxes to, to package fruit and vegetables has now shifted over to reusable wooden crates. So I think there's probably more stories um, than we poke a stick at and each of them inspiring in their own way. Yeah. So I guess the key there is that the impact of this Take 3 movement, it goes beyond just taking those three pieces of rubbish to upstream, right? That's right. When you walk into a funny kitchen, you look for the tap. And I guess you mentioned the Trojan horse before. This is a way of approaching that tap, but through the mopping up, I guess. It increases the consciousness yeah. of people to go, actually, I'm using these straws. I'm using this plastic tap. Right. I therefore yeah. stop doing so that. So when you see all the straws in the beach, next time you go to a bar, you might think twice about whether you you know, use a straw. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I wanted to ask you about the changes that you've seen in those five years. There has been a shift in, in, in perceptions, it has become more mainstream. Yeah, massively, yeah, massively. Exactly. Now, not only is it plastic pollution, now we're having really healthy conversations about the circular economy, around zero waste, around changing our model of consumption. That's the conversation we need to have. And where do you think that starting point is for the circular economy, even the education piece, so that we understand how to actually recycle things? Where do you see those leverage points? I think the great thing about the circular economy is it is a model that anyone can kind of get their head around. It's like saying, okay, I get it. At the moment, it's very linear. I can yeah. understand. And the vision for a circular system, it makes sense to me. In practicalities, it's obviously not very easy. What we're learning at the moment with this waste crisis in China is that it needs to have economic drivers. So and speaking about it, it being hard, and yes, it's hard, but that's because of the current systems that we have. If we start modelling nature, nature operates under circular economies all the time. So we know that it's possible. It's just about really disrupting those systems so that we can actually collaborate and work together to be able to recycle this stuff. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I think um, nature needs to be our, our mentor throughout this entire process. And I think so then you get a little bit mimicry. Exactly right. <laughs> We're one of millions of species that we, we share this, this beautiful biosphere with, then we go a long way. 
Yeah, uh, now you talk to kids a lot, is that right? You talk to school groups and little grommets and, and what have you. What's been the reaction like from them? Yeah, it's great. You show a kid a problem and say, should we go for a solution? They go, yes. The cliche is that the kids are the future. So if we can get them on side, then they can help to recreate those systems. All right, so what do you want our viewers to do? What can we do? How can we get on board this take treatment? Yeah, well look, obviously it's a simple and that small action of, of picking up a few items of trash. We obviously love it when people share that on social media because in doing so, you become an educator. Yeah. And you can inspire other individuals. And of course, if anyone's got any ideas around how they can amplify or enhance our, our message and our movement, then get involved, come and reach out to us. So if you search for that hashtag, take 3 c you'll see these people in hundreds of countries around the world. And I don't know, I find that inspiring to see all these people. That's, That's it. incredible. It's got to take a lot of us to help solve this, yeah. uh, this problem. So let's work together. Okay. Yeah. Take Three, I feel it's a very positive organisation. Would you say that? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think it's, um, it's a balancing act of the two, right? You've got to get people to wake up. You've got to show them that image of a turtle with a straw being pulled out oh. of its nostril, which I've only watched once and I don't think I could watch that's, it again. Yeah, that's all it takes, it's permanently seared into yeah. your memory. And then you've got the, the picture of someone with a handful of straws and they just picked up on yeah. Harriet over in Manly. And so yeah. people go, right, I'm going to ditch the straw, I'm going to pick them up. It, it took that catalyst to sort of get them there. So yeah. balancing act of two, but always optimistic because the last thing we need in the environment movement right now is, is people getting sent into a state of despair. Do the gloom. We don't need that at all. We need right. people to feel like change is possible and any small change, even picking up a few items, it does mean something. Absolutely. And I guess when you started this, did you actually anticipate that there'd be this many people coming together, creating these beautiful communities where friendships are born and potentially companies are born out of this? I don't suppose I, I necessarily imagined it, but in, in hindsight, it was probably always it, it, it's, its destiny and I wanted to go and achieve so much more. I'm really proud of what it has achieved, but what we need to be doing now is inspiring people in developing regions of the world. And one of our largest growth areas is places like Indonesia and the Philippines. We're wow. finding young youth that are um, seeing this problem firsthand, are looking out there for global solutions, and they're finding organisations like ours. So let's work hard to empower that generation as well. Is there anything else which is next for Take 3? Yeah, look, I think I'm really enhancing citizen science because citizens are out there, yeah. they're on the front line, and we can now put so much power in their hands with our technology. <laughs> and so I guess like with the data that you're collecting, say for example, a particular takeaway company is producing X amount of waste um, each year, you can actually go to those companies and say, look, you're, you're responsible for this, um, so how can we work with you to minimise the impact that you're having um, on this level that we're finding? Yeah, I think that's a big one. And look, you've got companies like Coca-Cola now who, their new initiative, World Without Waste, I mean, they're trying to become packaging neutral. They want to basically say, for every package we send out, we want to show that that's coming back into the circular economy or being removed from beaches. So they're big, bold claims. So there's an exciting period ahead. Is really. the container deposit scheme a part of that? Is that Definitely. how they do it? Right. Yeah, a big part of it. And so these companies have had a huge impact on the amount of um, waste that we've actually generated. But when we think about you know the amount of money that they've raised, they've actually got these incredible um, distribution channels that we can actually leverage ourselves to be able to work with them to be able to put things like Louise Hardman, Schroeder, um, in all different types of places so that we can actually start to recycle plastic in really remote places. That's right. I mean, we can't uh, champion the idea of a, of a circular economy without realising the role of everyone in creating that circular model. So, Especially the big corporations. Especially the big corporations. Yeah. All right. Fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. That's probably all. Awesome. That's a big problem. There are solutions out there. Uh, thanks, everyone. Stay tuned. <laughs> thanks for being a legend, Tim. Thanks, Tim. Thank you. <laughs> Now it.